Welcome to our listeners from around the world, and thank you for tuning in to this JAMA Clinical Reviews podcast. I am your host, Dr. Mary McDermott, Deputy Editor of JAMA, and I am here today with Dr. Min Pham, who is Assistant Professor of Urology at the University of North Carolina and author of a JAMA review on the topic of prostatitis. Welcome, Dr. Pham. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I wonder if you could start by defining what is prostatitis, and your review talks about three different types of prostatitis, and maybe you could just give us an overview of the different types. Certainly. So prostatitis refers to infection or inflammation or discomfort that is attributed to the prostate. There's actually four categories of prostatitis that's defined by the National Institutes of Health, but Three are what are most commonly found clinically, and that's the focus of our review. So type 1 is acute bacterial prostatitis. Type 2 is chronic bacterial prostatitis. Type 3 is chronic prostatitis, chronic pelvic pain syndrome. These first three are what are commonly encountered clinically. The fourth is asymptomatic inflammatory prostatitis, which is found incidentally during the evaluation of other issues, like for cancer, and doesn't require further evaluation or treatment. Maybe we could start with discussing acute bacterial prostatitis and wondering if you could please tell us what are risk factors for this condition? So acute bacterial prostatitis, I want to first define it. So that is a acute urinary tract infection of the prostate. And these patients, they typically present in a more acute care setting. They have sudden onset distressing urinary symptoms. They have frequency, urgency, burning with urination. And typically, they have systemic symptoms like fevers or chills. The patients who are at risk for this condition can be adult men of any age. The patients can be healthy men without underlying risk factors. They can also be men who've had recent instrumentation or surgery, such as cystoscopy, with the urologist, or a prostate biopsy while they're being evaluated for cancer. And that is especially important because those patients are at an increased risk of multidrug-resistant infection. Some of these patients um, who may have not had a recent procedure may have some underlying form of urinary dysfunction. That could be some type of urinary obstruction like a stricture or a BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia or neurogenic bladder. And I just wanted to clarify when an adult male gets a urinary tract infection, should we pretty much assume that the prostate gland is involved? Or is it possible to have a urinary tract infection without acute prostatitis? The UTIs can be overlapping to some degree, and the history and physical are going to reveal what we can be concerned about. The patients who have acute bacterial prostatitis, they typically have a more septic type of picture with more systemic symptoms like fevers or chills. They'll have pelvic pain, and many of them have some type of urinary obstruction from the prostatic swelling that can cause them to have weaker stream or an inability to avoid even, so urinary retention, even though they feel like they have a full bladder. One of the ways that you can distinguish acute bacterial prostatitis from simply cystitis or pyelonephritis is to perform a, a gentle digital rectal examination to examine if they have prostatic tenderness or swelling. And that leads me to the next question, which is how is acute bacterial prostatitis diagnosed? In addition to the prostate exam, what other tests should be done? The diagnosis for acute bacterial prostatitis is primarily based on symptoms with urine testing that raises concern for a UTI. The most important test is a urine culture that determines the bacteria and its sensitivity to antibiotics. Those results won't be immediately available. So a urine analysis that shows leukocyte esterase and nitrite positivity can also be supportive of the diagnosis. But the acute bacterial prostatitis may differ from other UTIs like pyelonephritis based primarily on symptoms. So related to what you've just been saying, I'm wondering whether every adult male that presents with symptoms of a urinary tract infection should have a prostate examination. It's commonly taught that rectal exams should not be performed, I think, in many circles because it's thought that there's a dissemination of bacteria when you do an aggressive palpation of the prostate. But to my knowledge, there 
isn't really a formal study of this. The rectal exam shouldn't be aggressive, and it can help distinguish acute bacterial prostatitis from other UTIs like pyelonephritis or cystitis. And that can be important if you're thinking about antibiotic duration for treatment. However, if the diagnosis is clear, it doesn't have to be performed if you're planning on just giving antibiotics for an extended time course or acute bacterial prostatitis is clear as well. So what are the organisms commonly implicated in acute bacterial prostatitis, and can you also speak to first-line therapy? These organisms are going to be most commonly the gram-negative organisms. E. coli causes a vast majority of these infections. Other gram-negative organisms can be like Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, Proteus. Enterococcus, a gram-positive, can also cause acute bacterial prostatitis. For first-line therapies for acute bacterial prostatitis, that's going to be broad-spectrum empiric antibiotics, either IV or oral, and these should be used until a urine culture sensitivity result returns. IV antibiotics can include piperacillin, tazobactam, ceftriaxone, and ciprofloxacin. If you need to use an oral agent, you can use a fluoroquinolone like ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin or trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. And once these sensitivity results return, then you narrow the antibiotic spectrum and the patient should have a total antibiotic course of at least two weeks, sometimes four. So what is the difference in duration of antibiotic therapy if a clinician is treating acute cystitis versus treating acute bacterial prostatitis? Acute bacterial prostatitis, the treatment duration is traditionally two to four weeks. But to my knowledge, there's no high-quality data that guides this. This is a matter of clinical principle more than anything. With respect to infections like cystitis or pyelonephritis, those may require a shorter duration. With men, they're typically classified as having a complicated UTI, so the duration can be between 7 to 14 days. But if you're thinking acute bacterial prostatitis, you think more about the duration of two to four weeks. Let's next discuss chronic bacterial prostatitis and who is at risk for that. The patients at risk for chronic bacterial prostatitis are similar to those who have acute bacterial prostatitis in terms of their underlying risk factors. Like the acute prostatitis, the risk factors can be prior surgery or catheterization of the urinary tract. Prior acute bacterial prostatitis, they can have some form of urinary stasis like obstruction or neurogenic bladder. And what organisms typically cause chronic bacterial prostatitis? That's also similar to Patients with acute bacterial prostatitis, these are going to be gram-negative organisms that are predominantly E. coli, Pseudomonas, Enterobacter, Klebsiella are other examples of gram-negatives, and Enterococcus can also cause chronic bacterial prostatitis. And can you just remind us, what is the difference between acute versus chronic bacterial prostatitis? So the patients who have acute bacterial prostatitis, the onset is more sudden the symptoms are more distressing, partly because of severity and partly because of how quickly they came up. These patients who have acute bacterial prostatitis are going to have systemic symptoms. The patients that you see for chronic bacterial prostatitis, it's, as the name implies, chronic. They typically present with a history of recurrent urinary tract infections. Those infections are typically caused by the same bacteria with similar susceptibility patterns or resistance patterns. And in between their UTI episodes, they may be asymptomatic. They may have pelvic pain. They may have lower urinary tract symptoms, but it's less severe. And is there a duration of symptoms required as part of that definition? It's not formally defined in the literature. When we think about chronic prostatitis, some clinicians, and when I say chronic prostatitis, I mean chronic bacterial as well as chronic prostatitis, chronic pelvic pain syndrome. Some clinicians would say three months, but that's a good rule of thumb, not necessarily something that's formally defined. And how is chronic bacterial prostatitis diagnosed, and how is it different from the diagnosis of acute bacterial prostatitis? When we think about acute bacterial prostatitis, that's defined as a UTI with positive urine culture or a urinalysis that is suspicious for UTI. For chronic bacterial prostatitis, these patients will have a history of positive urine cultures, but to actually diagnose this, the standard test in our literature is called the four glass test. And this involves collecting four different specimens for culture. So this is going to be urine from the urethra, urine from the bladder, 
followed by a prostatic massage, and then you'll collect two specimens from the prostate. You can also do a two-glass test, which basically is a midstream urine culture before a prostatic massage, as well as a urine culture after a prostatic massage. And these specimens are cultured, and if the specimens from the prostate reveal bacteria that is not present or is at a higher level than the specimens from, for the four-glass test, the bladder urethra, or for the two-glass test, the pre massage culture, then that would be suggestive of chronic bacterial prostatitis. And for the busy internist clinician, is there any value in doing a urinalysis and ordering a culture if an adult male presents with symptoms and signs consistent with chronic bacterial prostatitis? Yes. The Urine culture should be performed before a four-glass test to make sure there's not a acute infection because if you do have an acute infection, then the four-glass or two-glass test, if that's performed, will be confounded by the presence of cystitis. If the clinician does order a urinalysis first and do the culture, what would they typically find? It may be negative because these patients, they may have sterile urine in their bladder in their urethra, but when you palpate or massage the prostate, you can express some bacteria because the bacteria persists within the prostate but aren't necessarily in the bladder causing an active infection. I see. And would their urinalysis also be normal? It may or may not. I would use the urine culture as a gold standard. There may be some leukocytes or pyuria within the urine, but I wouldn't use that as a standard for diagnosing UTI or chronic bacterial prostatitis. And then what about treatment of chronic bacterial prostatitis, including how long to treat? That can be challenging. The reason for that is because antibiotics, some of them like penicillin, cephalosporins, nitroferentoin, they can't effectively penetrate the prostate because there aren't good transport mechanisms for those drugs. And so the antibiotics that are effective within the prostate are those that have like a high plasma concentration or are pretty soluble within lipids and don't bind proteins that much. The ideal drug is fluoroquinolones. The first-line treatment for chronic bacterial prostatitis is recommended to be at least four weeks of levofloxacin or ciprofloxacin. If the patient can't take fluoroquinolones or they have bacteria resistant to fluoroquinolones, then other agents could be trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, or doxycycline. And how do you know when to stop treatment? So the patients would have improvement in their urinary symptoms or pelvic pain, or they may have resolution in the recurrent urinary tract infections, but you would continue the standard treatment course of four to six weeks and see how they respond afterwards. Finally, let's discuss chronic prostatitis with chronic pelvic pain syndrome. And can you just remind us, how does this differ from the chronic bacterial prostatitis we've just been discussing? Yeah, so when we say chronic prostatitis, that refers to the bacterial prostatitis that we just discussed, and it also refers to chronic prostatitis, chronic pelvic pain syndrome, which is not a infection of the prostate. It's not a urinary tract infection, and these patients should have a negative urine culture. The condition, chronic prostatitis, chronic pelvic pain syndrome, is actually defined by its symptoms. So this is defined as chronic pain in the pelvis. That can be in the penis, the scrotum, the suprapubic region, the perineum. It can be with ejaculation or urination. And that pain typically is then ongoing for at least three months and isn't explained by other pathologies like infection, like urinary retention, like hernias, like cancer. And if you were to do the two or the four glass tests, would this be normal in these individuals? The two or four glass tests should not reveal any bacteria in these patients. So what's the underlying cause of the symptoms? It's unclear. So we don't know about the actual cause of chronic prostatitis, chronic pelvic pain syndrome. We don't fully understand it. Despite it being called prostatitis, not all men have inflammation of the prostate which is why the NIH, when they defined these four types of prostatitis, they included that uh, second part, chronic pelvic pain syndrome, as part of the name to recognize that it may not just entirely be inflammation of the prostate. It could be that the condition for some men may be related to changes on how they perceive stimuli or process sensory stimuli. Many patients with chronic prostatitis, chronic pelvic pain syndrome, they also have an increased risk of other chronic pain syndromes like fibromyalgia or irritable bowel syndrome, suggesting some type of underlying issue that is not necessarily confined to the prostate or the pelvis. Most likely it's multifactorial, but we don't fully understand this condition yet.
And how do you distinguish it from, for example, just benign prostatic hyperplasia? Patients may have overlap in benign prostatic hyperplasia and chronic prostatitis or chronic pelvic pain syndrome. But what you would expect from patients with BPH is primarily lower urinary tract symptoms, whereas with chronic prostatitis, chronic pelvic pain syndrome, this is more chronic pelvic pain that is present. And how is it treated? So multimodal therapy is often going to be helpful in this patients. You can use some oral treatments, such as alpha blockers, if they have lower urinary tract symptoms. The patients oftentimes have other things going on that may require something different than oral therapy. For example, they may have some poor quality of life impact and experience depression or have difficulty coping and may need to see a mental health specialist. They may have those other chronic pain conditions that we talked about, and that may require referral to a specialist for those conditions. They may have some pelvic floor dysfunction, and they may benefit from physical therapy of their pelvic floor. Is there a way to distinguish who would benefit from either of those? Yes. When you evaluate someone with chronic prostatitis, it can be helpful to perform a digital rectal examination, not just to palpate for tenderness of the prostate, but also to palpate for tenderness of the pelvic floor, which can be found if you sweep your fingers lateral to the prostate and around the rectal wall, that you can palpate for tenderness of the pelvic floor. And would you expect someone with this condition to have tenderness of all those areas? Sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. The rate at which this is reported is variable. In some papers, they report a 25% rate, and in another paper, like two-thirds of patients had it in their series. So it sounds like if it's present, it's helpful in diagnosis, but if it's not there, it does not rule out this diagnosis. Is that yes, okay. yes. All right, this has been really informative. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I would say that one of the most common mistakes with uh, uh, treating chronic prostatitis, chronic pelvic pain syndrome is uh, when it comes to antibiotics. So while antibiotics are the primary treatment for bacterial prostatitis, acute or chronic, they should be avoided when the culture is negative in the case of chronic pelvic pain syndrome. I'm Mary McDermott, and I've been speaking today with Dr. Min Pham about his JAMA review on the topic of prostatitis. You can find a link to the article in this episode's description. This episode was produced by Shelley Steffens at the JAMA Network. To follow this and other JAMA Network podcasts, please visit us online at jamanetworkaudio.com or search for JAMA Network wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. This content is protected by copyright by the American Medical Association with all rights reserved, including those for text and data mining, AI training, and similar technologies.